Today we're going to talk about how to configure core-to-core -core streaming over QLAN. This comes in handy when you need to create system of systems, where you have multiple cores that need to pass audio from one system to another. You'll see this a lot in installations like airports and theme parks. This tutorial will help you configure the QLAN transmitter and receiver to allow this audio pass. So, let's get started, shall we? Let's pretend that I'm designing an audio system for a theme park. One area of the theme park is called Treasure Island, and all the audio in this area is being processed through a single core. The other area of the park is called Zombie Village, and likewise, all of the audio is processed by a different core. Let's say that there are a few different shows that happen inside Treasure Island, and you want to be able to stream the final mixes of these shows to the core in Zombie Village. Here we have the design for Treasure Island's core, which will be the core that will represent our audio source. I'm using these two audio players to represent the final mixes of my two shows inside Treasure Island. To start off, we need to configure the system's domain so that the two cores will be looking for each other. If we click on our core and we go over to the properties, under clocking, go to clock domain, and you'll find that clock domains defaulted to private. Now this is because most systems don't require more than one core, but since our system has two cores, we need to set this from private to custom. And when you do this, you get an additional pop-up called custom domain. In this custom domain field, you need to give this system a custom name. I will call mine my park. Next, let's add a transmitter to the design. Come over here to inventory and click the plus icon and then under Peripherals, go down to the QLAN TX. This will add a virtual transmitter to your inventory. As the name would infer, this module is in charge of transmitting the audio from one core to another. Drag that component into the schematic and let's configure its properties. So you can give the transmitter a name and you can change its channel count. And since my audio player only has two channels, let's make this channel count Two. When you enable dynamic stream name on both the transmitting end and the receiving end, it will allow a single receiver to receive streams from multiple transmitter by letting you name the different streams. Now, this really comes in handy and I highly recommend you do it, even if you only have one stream because, quite frankly, you never know when you're going to add an additional stream to the mix. So I'm going to take this brilliant advice and click yes. Let's add a second transmitter into our design and drag it into our schematic and configure it in a very similar way. Again, not forgetting to click yes on dynamic stream name and to change your channel count to two. Last step before we load to the core is to wire our audio players to the transmitter, like so. And now let's send our design to the core by pressing F5. Now you'll notice over here in the inventory panel that the transmitter components are red. Now don't worry about this for now, this just means that the transmitters are not finding the corresponding receivers. And we'll get to that part in a second. Let's open the audio player control panel and then choose a file preloaded onto your core and press play and loop so that we have continuously playing audio throughout the duration of the tutorial. And to make sure that you have audio playing, let's hover over one of our control pins and you'll see the miniature RTA is moving. And let's just give a listen to what that sounds like by clicking the unmute button. And it should play through your computer speakers. Let's quickly do the same thing to our other audio player. Open its control panels, choose an audio file, hit play and loop, and hover over this pin and unclick the mute button so we can give a listen to that. Great. Now let's take a look inside the transmitter itself. Double click the component to open its control panel and you'll notice that our meters are indicating that our transmitter is transmitting audio. At this point you can adjust the gain signal, you can also uh, have access to the mute button and the invert, but I'm mainly concerned with assigning a stream name to this transmitter. It's important to note that you can only do this while the design is loaded into the core. I'll call this one show one, and I'll do the same thing for the other transmitter and call it show two. Now that we have the Treasure Island design properly configured for transmitting, 
we can open up a second instance of QSIS Designer so we can configure the receiving end for the zombie island design. That's right, QSIS Designer lets you have two different designs open at the same time. Pretty cool, right? Much like before, we need to configure the core to allow for a custom domain. So we come over here to clock domain again, switch this from private to custom, and then give it the same name as you did Treasure Island. So for my sake, it was my park. Now let's add the QLAN receiver to the design. Let's go over here, click the plus icon, and under peripherals, click QLAN RX, which is the virtual QLAN receiver. Drag that into the schematic and give it a name and assign the correct channel count. For me, it's two. And make sure that the dynamic stream name is set to yes. Now we want to save this design to the zombie core by pressing F5. And you'll notice that in the inventory panel, our receiver is red. Well, that's because you haven't chosen which stream you'd like to receive. We can do that by opening up the control panel and under select stream, you can select show one or show two or whichever stream you have, and voila, the component comes alive. You'll also notice that over here in the inventory, the receiver bar is no longer red. Now to verify that our stream is coming through properly and we've got the correct stream, just hover over the output pin and unmute, and whoa, there's our scary music. Let's go ahead and pin this open. I'm going to show you a few other things. If you come down here, you'll notice that you have the same options as you did the transmitter. You have the gain, the mute, the invert. And there's one other thing that I do want to show you is that you can switch between these streams while it's running. So if I wanted to switch to the other one, all I'd have to do is click this. Ah, there's our less scary pirate music. This is just one way to use this component you are only limited to the number of available network channels on your given core, which you can monitor by clicking File and Check Design. The only exception to that rule is the Core 250i, which limits the number of core-to-core -core streaming channels to 16, even though you might have up to 64 network channels. For more explanation on output channels, check out Maximizing Channel Outputs on qsctraining.com. If you have the need to play both Show 1 and Show 2 simultaneously, rather than switching between the two, just add another set of transmitters and receivers to your designs. In fact, if you want to bring over a lot of audio channels in the same stream, just bump up your channel count and they'll all come over on a single component. And there you go. Now you know how to stream audio between two different cores. Pretty easy, right? Hopefully you'll find this helpful on your next install. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.